Hey guys, all right, today we're going to go over the 10 secrets that veteran players have learned in hindsight, mostly, obviously, the hard way, um, trial and error. So first and foremost, I'm going to take you guys down here to the Supply Depot. This is one of the first things I wish I would have done way sooner. So it, with the Supply Depot, you can see you have a buy and you have a sell button. Once you hit a certain point in this game where you have enough four stars and you have enough five stars, which will happen sooner than you think, you can start selling all of your three stars. At that point, you need to start stockpiling because they have characters like this five-star sendable that turns into a six-star for sale all of the time. And this is an extreme sale. So right now, if I were to go through and sell everything, I would probably have enough for him. Um, but, you know, obviously that wouldn't be a very smart move. But getting to these as soon as possible is going to make you as strong as possible. And that is the whole point of the game is getting there as quick as possible. So you definitely want to stockpile these. Sell the gear you or sell for the characters, sell weapons. Um, once you reach that spot, you know, where you have enough four star weapons. I will say though, um, just so you're aware that we have had roadmaps now that did require us to have a three star team, a four star team, and a five star team. And that um really did mess some people up because they had to, they didn't have the three stars that were available and you had to have them. And if you didn't have an, at least enough to get through the roadmaps, then you were stuck. So I would say I would keep a very strong three star, four star and five star team at all times. And um, other than that, though, I would sell once you know you reach a comfortable spot where you have your team is pretty well set and, um, of course, you can check out my team building for three stars and up um, videos to help you on that. But then you can sell, 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 stockpile, 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 save, 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 and then turn around and buy the six stars and keep going. And then, of course, they have everything else here, too, from raid cans to energy cans to war cans. And you can do that as well. And then they have trainers and weapons and three stars and four stars and active skill for your six stars. I would be saving for your six stars as much as possible. You're going to have to give in here and there, of course. And, you know, as you build and go through the four stars and five stars and make your way there. But you definitely have better odds making your way there way faster by doing it this way. Gear markers is pretty much the exact same thing. You're going to want to stockpile them, but you're going to want to hold on to them until you want to go all out on a level, level up. That's with a faction or individual. And then, of course, you know, use it as you need to for gear and food, but really try to stockpile it. Then you will reach a spot where you have thousands and thousands of sunglasses and you'll be able to sell it and then come in here and when, during a level up and then buy it with food. Survival markers and assault markers are almost exactly like supply markers, just with some very different things in there. But they all have, you know, pretty much the same stuff. The um, characters, weapons, mods, that kind of stuff. You are going to want to stockpile as well and save for the best stuff that's going to get you the furthest with it. The next thing is what you're doing right now. Watch videos, learn, and apply it. This game is very complex. There's a lot of components to it. And it can become a little overwhelming. Reach out and learn it. It will do you well. Also, check the forums and all that too. There's also a website you can go to. And there are tons of content creator videos there that are super, super helpful. The other thing that a lot of people overlook is and forget to do, especially with time. I don't know what it is with time and forgetting to do this, but actually going through and redoing your teams, your mods, and your weapons. And I don't mean going through and redoing your weapons, starting over in the armory and, and resetting them. 
or, you know, starting over from scratch with new characters or anything of this sort. What I mean by it is, is to actually take everything off and go and relook at everything again. You forget what characters you have after you reach a spot. You have so many. You forget what weapons you have, what stats you have on what, and especially what modifications you have. They pile up fast. And then as you apply them to other teams and you get used to using the same characters and you pick a couple new ones up here and there, you forget that you have, you know, these characters way down here sitting here and waiting that would now work had become obsolete now would work flawlessly in your new team especially as we're seeing s class characters come in and you're going to see that happen throughout your three to four star transitions and your four to five star transi transitions and so on and so forth it's just kind of the natural order of things so definitely come through redo your team Go through and check your leader skill. Make sure your attack is the best it can be. Your defense is the best and your walker team is the best. Then go through and make sure your weapons are the best. And then I would go through every single time that they have the unequip mod sale. I go through and unequip all of your mods and redo them again and set them up even better and, and continue to learn, continue to grow and continue to figure out, you know, your teams and your characters and this game the best to your ability. The other thing is um, to save all your coins that are gifted in the beginning and stockpile those until you can do about a hundred pull for an S class or a very awesome ascendable, you know, uh, five star or and or six star. And I say this because, and I don't remember exactly how much, but I know that they give coins out in the beginning and I remember wasting mine and we're going to go over that next, but I did. And, um, I didn't realize I was wasting them at my, at the time. And then of course they have things like this as well. You can do, I don't do those as often. And, um, but I do, will do the pulls. And then of course we'll go over that in a second as well. But I didn't spend them well, so hold on to your coins. And then as you level up, you do get coins as well. Stockpile your coins, spend them wisely, especially if you are not going to spend real money on this game. Um, it will go a very long way for you to come in here and be able to do a 40 pull instead of a open one or open 10. It will go in your favor, especially when you come in here and you want to go for her. I mean, she's brand new and amazing. And so it's definitely worth it. All right. And then <laughs> let's see let, what next. The next tip I have for you guys is honestly, I find a little funny because, again, it's the mistake I made um, when I came here. For those of you who don't know or are new, um, and if you are welcome, but when I came to the game, I've never played games really before. I played them a little bit when I was younger with my brothers and, and then, you know, as an adult though, not a gamer, totally new to the world, totally, uh, had a lot to learn and made some pretty big mistakes. But one of them was this, do not buy a ceasefire. Do not spend your coins on a ceasefire. There is no need for it. If you are worried about your resources being taken, you can legitimately hide them. And where you can hide them is in your workshop. You can put your food and craft it here and hide every single part of it in your energy cans. And then when you want it back, you can go and sell them. Now, what I'm telling you with this is, is that Though you can sell, turn around and sell them, there is a little bit of a catch. You lose 50% of what you put in, no matter what it is across the board. And there's a lot more down here, trust me. So then, you know, once you get these research, you can again put your wood supplies in here, et cetera, et cetera, which I'm going to actually do right now because why not? 
All right. So then I would have the ability to hide all of my wood if I felt it was necessary. And so do you guys. So instead of buying the ceasefire, if you really are concerned about losing those resources from being raided, then yes, of course, hide them instead. And, and then no, you're going to lose the 50%, but it's better than losing the rep. And that is something that some you guys will also learn is that rep in the beginning, you are judged off of it to a certain point and it kind of goes off of how active you are. And here, you know, is a good point. Now, of course, this is my small account, but if I was, wasn't new and this was where I was and I've been playing for four years, this wouldn't look good. And so it does show to a point what kind of player you are, but it doesn't define exactly what player you are or if it's the best faction um, based on ranking as far as total amounts of rep. It really doesn't. It, it doesn't change anything in the game. It doesn't make any difference between, besides that one little viewpoint. And that was a very big deal um, when we first started. Everyone was all about getting rep and keeping rep. And that has reputation, by the way, not just rep. Um, and that has slowly come to realize that it doesn't necessarily mean you are the strongest faction or the strongest player or have a weak team or any of those things. All right. So the other thing is, um, yes, with cans. You know, when you're in here, and let's just kind of go through the line real quick. So we are just in general. So ceasefires, now you know. Now you have cans, world energy, raid, you'll have war, territory, survival. War energy is completely different and a totally different conversation. It's no survival road. Territory is not so much besides when the limited ones come out. World and raid energy. They give them out in awards, in the depot, in so many different places. There's just no reason to spend your coins on them, in my opinion. Same thing goes for your food and wood. I wouldn't do it. Not me. I made those mistakes, regretted it hugely later, especially when you're filling, spending 100 coins and filling your food, you know, 200,000 when, you know, it's, up to millions later. It's just, you know, not, doesn't add up in my head. <laughs> Wish I wouldn't have done it. So sharing that. All right. Um, what's the other thing that happens? So the one thing I do do, by the way, and going back into here and offers, offers are a completely different thing. You need to one of course, live within your means and know what you want to do. And if you're okay and comfortable and all spending, and there's a lot of people who don't spend and there's a lot of people who do. It's just is what it is. And it's completely up to you. And then these are completely your choices. Spending obviously gives you stuff that you wouldn't get in the game and it gives you a boost to get ahead a little bit. So um, the featured though things that you can buy with coins. These I come to more often than anything else and because they usually have some pretty awesome deals. Um, this gear bag is not too bad. When the odds are even, it makes it much better. And a lot of the times they'll have one. Let's see. And see, that one's not even that bad. I mean, that's... 50 coins back so you only are going to lose 40 at the most for a chance at a Lilith not a great chance but a chance not too bad um let's see this one here you go 50 50 percent odds this I would say is a solid chance 5,500 50 50 and then 160 coins so they do have some pretty good things in here and then the other thing that I do do is the 30-day pass. And this is why I personally do it. And this is the only real spending I really do. 
every once in a while I'll do a really good deal. But for the most part, I personally stick to this. And it's because you get 250 coins right off the bat. Then you get 70 coins for 30 days plus a bonus carry at the end. It's $9.99 to start. Then if you buy it early, I believe it goes down to as low as $8.99. Maybe, yeah, $8.99, so you save a dollar. And you get a total of 2,350 coins about, if you know I have that all figured out right. And it's late, so bear with me. Right here, as you can see, 2,300 coins is $30. So you're getting a little over three times the amount for $10 plus the bonus crate, which does have five-star sendables in it and a chance to get one. So I think that is definitely worth it, in my opinion. All right, so what, let's see what's next up. Okay, so obviously one of the hardest things for people to do, and I have no idea why this is, is to ask for help. But you definitely need to be able to ask for help in this game. And... The other thing that leads me to next is hire your faction daily, your faction members. You can come in here and select a faction supporter, select the person. I obviously have hired everybody here already and then apply it and attack and that stacks up really quickly. And what it does is it takes you over here, helper rewards, and then you get to collect these every eight you collect. So every eight people who hire you, you get to have one collection out of this. And you are guaranteed at least a three-star character or a three-star weapon or better. It is definitely worth it in helping your entire faction to do it, including yourself. Hire someone every single day. Hire every person in the faction. Best thing I can, um, almost best thing I can tell you. Going into the most important thing I can tell you is do your absolute best to find the most awesome faction you can find. And I say this, I just brought in the way wrong team. I'm probably going to get slaughtered off subject. But I say this because you really do want to play this game with people that you enjoy and have fun with and enjoy the game and are just nice people. No drama. They're helpful. They want to have fun. They're here to relax. That is how Hawk is. We are we have built a family. We really have. We have done amazing things. I couldn't be more proud to be a part of that family. I really couldn't. And I think that I know that changes everything for every single one of us in Hawk who plays this game. It becomes hard sometimes and sometimes redundant. And your faction really does pull you through it. And then you're grateful they did because there is so much that you get out of this game in so many ways that it's insane. I really couldn't go over every single one of them. So definitely find a great faction that you fit in well with, that you have like-minded people with and enjoy it. And definitely, you know, do the no drama and have fun and, and be here and, and part of the community in a real way. And that makes this game just hands down amazing. It really does. It just changes it in such a real way that it's really that big of a deal in my opinion. And lastly, and again, so important and I'm really sad I'm kind of sad, I'm not going to lie, that this is the last um, tip I can give everyone or, you know, secret, is to stay out of, glo I, we call it GC or global chat. 98% of it, and look, I did die, like I said, I probably would. So, you know, probably try that again and use the other team I was using. But... Going into global chat, as much as you want it to be a really awesome place, it's not. 
98% of it is just cyberbullying and toxic as hell and just so nasty, it's absurd. Some of us are trying so hard to change this. We really, really are. And for more information on that, please check out my hashtag grow up challenge video on fighting cyberbullying and how you can help pay it forward with me and a bunch of other people who are standing forward and saying we would like this to seriously end and we would like to stop seeing people getting hurt in real life over this. So until this is changed, Best advice, just stay out of it. They will run you out over just a couple of bad apples. We're not talking about hundreds of people. We're talking about two to five in a region. And that's what really I think makes it even sadder. So yeah, run away. Seriously. All right, you guys, that's it for this one. I hope it's been helpful. I hope that these definite um 10 secrets that us veteran players have learned the hard way will teach you something and and keep you from learning having to learn the same hard lessons so i truly do appreciate each and every one of you and all of your unconditional love and support please don't forget to like share and subscribe if you'd like to be notified of whenever i upload a video um, just go ahead down by subscribe and click the bell next to subscribe. You'll then be notified per whatever preferences you set. And that's about it. I hope you're having an awesome week, you guys. Let me know how you're doing both in the game and real life. I love hearing from all of you guys. Do you need help on anything? Have any questions? Have any ideas on videos? I'm always up to hearing from anyone and everyone. And I always do comment back. And uh, please, 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 you guys, I have so many out there right now who are watching and not subscribed, and it helps me in more ways than I can tell you if you could just push that subscribe button again. All right. Thanks again, you guys. Have a great day and continue to choose not to be either of the evils in this world. Hashtag grow up challenge.